Hey guys, Julian here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make groovy warehouse techno, sort of like TRW72 artists like that. As usual, you can get the full project files, samples, MIDI, presets, everything from this video is available at the top of the description on my website. Definitely go grab that, it's a really great way to help support me. Plus, you're going to get this really solid template, which will help take your tracks to the next level. You know, I put a lot of work into studying these different styles of techno. And now you guys can benefit from all that. Go grab this on top of the description. It really helps support me. Plus, it's going to help you take your tracks to the next level. You can grab this and instantly take make your best techno track you've ever made. I promise you, this is going to help you a lot more than pretty much anything else you can get for your production. So go grab it. Thank you so much for the support, guys. And let's dive in. So, we're at 135 BPM, a little bit faster. You know, maybe if we're thinking of this kind of like more groovy techno, You'd probably imagine like 130, 128, something like that. But I think putting it a little faster, like that slight speed up can actually make a big difference. And the first thing we have up here is just this side chain. So this is just, it's literally just the same kick that I'm using for the main kick. But I just shortened it. And then I'm just using this to side chain everything. And if you guys want me to make a video about why I'm doing this style of side chaining so much recently, let me know in the comments and I can do that. But this is like the new method that I think works really well for that. Next thing we have here is the kick. So you can hear it's nice punchy rumble kick. So it's made with a 909 kick. That's the first thing here. When I listen to these different guys and their tracks, it's all the 909 kick, and it's a lot of other 909 drums too. Like a lot, of, you can get a lot of sounds for the style of techno out of the 909. But basically, yeah, it's just this 909 kick. That's literally all it is. You can see I dragged the start time forward, so that it's like right at the start of the sample. And then I put a little bit of drum bus on it. And now I wanted to show you guys this because I think, you know, a lot of times I try to keep the kick dry. I think with this style of techno, you can make it a little bit like crunchier or a little bit more like pushing but you just don't make it like so over the top right so that's why we have this drum bus here you can see it's only on 23 percent but if we turn it off you know that same it's the same sound just a little boost from this extra layer on top but we still have the low end and the power in there because we're blending it see you lose the low end if you just put this at 100 yeah that's fat but you kind of lose that like really powerful thick 909 sound right so we just want to keep this as a layer on top and then for the sub or for the rumble so it's made with the same kick and it's literally just the same thing it's just playing quarter notes and then what's happening here is it's actually a delay and reverb rumble so this is a little different it's kind of a new technique i'm not really talking about this before too much but basically like a lot of times when you make a rumble it's going to be either just delay or just reverb, right? Right? Like. But the idea here is if you take this really short reverb, you gotta make sure the reverb is really short, and then you put this fast delay into it. So you can kind of generate new textures. Like, it's really, it's not about like being super, it's not like, oh yeah, I can hear exactly this many milliseconds of delay and you know the reverb no you're not it's not about that you're just creating it's just like different ways of creating this wash of rumble right so we got those two and then another very important thing is it's not just the delay and reverb but you got to distort them and amp is perfect for this it's a really good way to not just distort those and really get the texture but also you could get a lot of different textures you know right but we just got this on the blues and then I've got this low pass. Obviously just taking the lows. We got a compressor side chaining it to the side chain. And you see the reason why we do this is because basically if you side chain to this 909 kick. See that has like a lot of bass in the tail, right? So all of your side chaining is gonna be like boom, boom, boom. like it's gonna like kinda come up weirdly. So that's why we have the side chain at the top, is you just make this little short one that you can't hear, and then now you can just side chain everything super hard. But it's so short that it's not gonna like completely knock everything out of the way. Like it would if you just side chain that to the kick. And then you can shape it a little bit with the attack and release if you need to. With this EQ here, which is just cutting out below 25 hertz, all the stuff that you can't hear that would get in the way of headroom for your track. And then finally, just the utility converting everything to mono. Even though the amp converts it to mono, yes, 
there's a thing though actually with filtering that I've learned recently is that filtering can kind of affect your phase. Like if you use a high pass filter, it can mess up the phase of your sound sometimes. So in like a very, very subtle way. So with the bass where you need it to be like really perfect stare or mono, just throw that utility at the end. Make sure it's good. You won't have any problems. Then we have these percussions, which kind of all go together. And I'll play this with the kicks you can really hear. Right, so you can hear this is all that background kind of like warehouse techno style percussion. And you can hear it all kind of creates one groove, right? It's not just about, you know, creating these cool sounds and having the deep, you know, dark clap sound and all that. It's also like creating that groove, like the call and response. Like we have two claps here, but it's not just like at random times. It's like, like kind of creating one thing with the two samples. And then even this hi-hat, even though that's in a completely different space in the groove, especially if we start playing this with the 909 hi-hat where it's like keeping the beat. You can hear it's all kind of like one groove there, right? So that's how you want to think about those. In terms of the actual sounds, you know, it's pretty simple. Like this one's just a percussion. This is this clap with just a bit of drum bus on it to make it a bit fatter. And you'll notice also when you do this, this having two different percussions. One thing I learned, you have to turn this first one, the one that plays first, up a little bit. Otherwise, you're gonna think you have this cool little rhythm and then people are only gonna hear the second one. You gotta make that first one a bit louder to really make it heard, I've noticed. And then on the hi-hat, it's just a bit of drum bus and also the short reverb that has a ton of pre-delay. So you kinda get like, like that nice like kinda wash of reverb. Cool. So then the next thing that we have here, is the synth sequence. So, what's going on here? Is it's three different synths, and it's kind of like, okay, so we have this one, which just plays the main groove. Right, and this is just this, like, call and response pattern where we have, like, Dun dun dun, dun dun dun, dun dun dun. You know, you can see how it's all like, like this is the call, this is the response, but then in another way, this is the call, and then this is the response. So there's a lot of call and response happening. Even though this is literally just two notes across two different octaves, just A and A sharp, there's so much happening there because of all that call and response. And that's really not that hard to do. You know, you just have to pick like two, maybe three notes at the most and just try to create like a little rhythm like that where it feels like it's answering or it's asking a question and it's answering the question. Now for the actual sound on this one, this is made with operators. So it's this square four. So it's like a square wave with a lot of the harmonics removed and then a full saw wave. You can see the envelope on that. It's very plucky. And then we have this third and fourth oscillator. And you can see how the third one is really short. So since this is doing FM, this third and fourth oscillator, C and D here, are actually just kind of like adding a bit of a pluck. Like how short that is, it's just adding that little like on the top of the sound. See what I mean if I turn that on and off? So then that's happening. You can see these are also detuned a bit. And then we have a low pass filter with an envelope as well as the sign shaper to make it a bit more crunchy and also a pitch envelope making it go like whoop and pitch at the start and then we have this LFO and the LFO is doing is on the filter cutoff as well as the volume of oscillator B and it's doing a saw wave down on eighth notes so basically you have your rhythm happening see how when I turn that LFO off it's like a completely different thing but then the LFO has it going with the filter and that volume while that pattern is being played. So see, we're getting these two rhythms together and that's actually what makes this sound because again, as soon as we turn this LFO off, it just kind of becomes like this crazy thing. But then when you add in the LFO with the eighth notes, saw wave down, it's the two rhythms combined of the notes and the LFO. And that's very important with the style of techno to understand. And then we have this chorus. We just have a bunch of feedback, kind of adding some metallic overtones. We have a really short reverb. 
and then just a bit of echo. So that's the first thing that's happening, and that's what I started with. And then we have these two synths, which are really kind of like accenting that one, right? Like these have their own little call and response groove going on. Right, we can see it's like the call is this first one, and then the response is the second one. And those sound good on their own too, like you can have a part in the track where it's just these. But basically, if you play those over top of that other synth, see it's really like accenting that and adding a lot to that pattern. So these are also just using those same two notes, like this one for example, see it's just A and A sharp across different octaves. And then same thing with this one, this is just A and A sharp. And so for the first one, it's made with wavetable. It's just two square waves, yeah, you can see. And then the secret to this one is the second one is actually up one semitone. It's literally just one note up from what the first one's playing, but it gives you this really dark, like, kind of evil sound. And then we just have a low-pass filter with actually two envelopes on it. So we have kind of like this longer one, and then this one, which is adding that fast pluck at the start. We have a little bit of echo, and then some drum bus, and then for the second synth here. So this is just two saw waves inside a wavetable detune a little bit with this unison here and then you can see yeah, I got a low pass filter with an envelope on it and then just like a tiny little bit of echo I didn't want too much though because it can really get in the way with a sound like that and then what's happening here is then on the group of all three of those synths I'm treating it as one synth sequence right so we're side chaining them all together again to that side chain and then I've also got a low pass filter and this just adds even more movement you can see it's just doing this thing where it's like opening and then it's all the way open, and then it closes back down. And you can even get a little bit more intricate with that and have more interesting automations going on with this. But this is basically just like another thing to keep this moving, right? Like it's all these little things happening. Like it's the call and response. It's the LFO inside of this operator synth. It's the way that these two synths play on top of that it's this low pass filter automating all those little details come together to make this work really well in the track and yeah so then the next thing that we have here is this 909 hi-hat like i said lots of 909 sounds i heard this in a ton of tracks from these guys so it's just again 909 hi-hat shortened pitch down a little and then I'm using this echo here on the mid side setting and it's actually creating kind of like some background hi-hats right like you have like a tick -tick -tick. so it's kind of a way instead of having two sounds you can get that same amount of stuff out of just one sound right and it makes it more minimal and I think that works really well for techno then we have this noise percussion So all this is, it's just a white noise inside of Operator. I'll play it with that hi-hat so you can kind of hear what it's doing. So yeah, it's just a white noise with a bandpass filter with an envelope on it, as well as a hard shaper to make it a bit more percussive. An LFO, just moving the filter around a little bit. And then some drum bus to make it even more percussive. And this fits really well into the mix. Even though it's kind of a quiet sound, because everything else is so minimal, and because it's like there's nothing else that fits into this exact same place, you can still hear it. Right, and that's the key to all of this stuff. It's like these very simple tracks where even you could have a tiny sound like this, but because it's so simple and because nothing else will be clashing with it, it works. And then the last thing we have down here is this little drone sound. So it's just playing one note. It's actually playing G, but you can kind of ignore that because it's just a bit detuned. And what's happening here is, yeah, so this is this FM sound made with four sine waves inside of Operator. You can see just at different octaves detuned a bit. Got a bandpass filter with an LFO on it, just moving that around. Bit of delay, reverb, some saturation, high pass, and then this auto pan, which makes it sound like it's being side chain. <laughs> It's a little bit sharper. And yeah, that just plays on top to kind of give some more like ominous atmosphere. You know, you could almost look at this as like, like maybe you have one part of the track, which is this. And then one part of the track, which is this. And yeah, so that's going to be it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed. As always, make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. And let me know what you think of this video in the comments. 
Like I said in the beginning, you can get this full project file, samples, MIDI, presets, literally every single thing from this video that I just showed you is available right at the top of the description on my website. Don't miss it. This is a really high quality techno template and it'll take your tracks to the next level. I promise whether you're looking to learn or you're just looking for some new inspiration and you already think you know everything. This is great for you. Definitely go grab it. Link is at the top of the description. Thank you so much for all the support, guys. Every little bit helps. If I've helped you with these videos, definitely go grab this because it's going to help keep me going so I can keep bringing you guys new videos like this every single day. Thanks so much for the support, guys, and I will see you tomorrow with another video.